Awesome. So I just wanted to welcome everyone to the 42nd Street Intersection Intersection Safety Improvement Project Open House. If you have any questions during my presentation, feel free to add them in the chat and it will be addressed during the Q&A portion at the end. So the, the chat icon is located in the top right corner next to the red leave button. Uh, should be little chat bubbles. If you click on that, you'll be able to ask your questions and we will uh, address those uh, at the end of the uh, open house. So we're going to start with introductions from the project team. My name is Ryan Ackerman. I'm an associate transportation planner at Minneapolis Public Works. Sean Team Burris, I am a transportation planner um, also with Public Works and working with Ryan on this project. Hey, and good evening, everybody. My name is Dean Chamberlain. I'm a senior engineer at Tool Design Group working on this project. Great to be with you all tonight. Yeah, and uh, uh, not with us today is uh, Mitch Kaufman, also from Tool Design. Uh, he is uh, working with Dean uh, as a senior planner for this project for Tool. Just going to go over a little bit of our agenda today. So we're going to do uh, go over a little bit about project background, our goals, existing conditions on 42nd Street, coordination with other projects in the in the area and future projects, what we're looking to do on 42nd Street, potential intersection designs, the results from our survey over the last month, and then going to close out with our project schedule moving forward and a Q&A portion. So this project is focused primarily on uh, on the identified intersections and the image to your right. There will also be signal upgrades to the Bloomington and 42nd Street intersection and light, lighting upgrades. This uh, we're, we're one of the main uh, goals for this is to improve pedestrian safety and comfort along this corridor, as well as uh, coordinate that future uh, a future bikeway project uh, at a at a later at a later year that I'm going to get into more detail on uh, later in the presentation. Uh, this is going to be for, again focused on six intersections that uh, that are on 42nd Street, and we're looking at construction in 2026 with about a $3 million uh, project budget and 1.6 million of which is uh, federal funded. Here's a bigger image of our project area and where these improvements will take place. The pink dots represent the intersections we're set to improve. The intersections are 42nd Street and Stevens Avenue, 3rd Avenue, 4th Avenue, 10th Avenue, 15th Avenue and Bloomington Ave. These six intersections address gaps in safe crossing points along 42nd Street and uh, with, while also improving con uh, connections to two parks along the route and our space to help addressing speeding problems. A few of our goals for this project, again, is we're, we're really looking to improve safety and comfort for people walking and biking and rolling. We want to increase access to neighborhood destinations want to uh, have traffic calming and we want also want to reduce motor vehicle speeds along the street. It's something we heard a lot about during our uh, survey and uh, coordinate with existing and future bikeway improvements on this street as well. A couple of these are a couple of the city's guiding policies that will inform the project team on design treatments for the intersections. We have this, uh, the city of Minneapolis complete streets policy and the city of Minneapolis uh, street design guide. So we'll start on the image to our left, our Vision Zero network. For those of you who don't uh, who don't know, the, uh, Vision Zero is an international movement to end traffic deaths and severe injuries on our streets. The city is committed to the goal of zero traffic deaths and severe injuries on the city streets by 2027. So this red circle here is uh, 42nd Street. It was previously identified as a high injury street back in 2022. That uh, what we know is that these high injury streets make up around 9% of all streets in Minneapolis, but are where 66% of all severe and fatal crashes occur. As a result of being identified as a high injury street previously, Public Works installed bollards along 42nd Street, as some of you may uh, recognize as you're driving on 42nd or walking or 
uh, biking uh, along 42nd Street as a temporary safety measure until a more permanent treatment is installed. And this project is really looking at uh, making uh, a more permanent treatment uh, on, on select intersections on this corridor. Uh, so just because 42nd Street is not currently on the high injury street, uh, not currently a high injury street, it can re it can re easily just just as easily reappear in the future. That is why this project is so important. We, we you know our goal is to really keep 42nd Street off the high injury network. And now shifting to the image to the right, 42nd Street is also identified on the city's all ages and abilities network. This is the city's bike network. The intersection designs of the identified intersections will incorporate elements that will accommodate a future low stress bikeway on this street. So when we come back to you all later this summer, we will have uh, concepts uh, of potential intersection treatments that will incorporate uh, those uh, bike, bike elements as well. The next couple of slides show existing conditions and work done from the Vision Zero program. Here we have the intersections of Stevens and 10th Avenue on 42nd Street with our with our bollard installation. And again, you know, this project is really foc uh, main focus is making these bollard treatments more permanent with with concrete and, and things like that. This was back in 2022. These were installed. Again, here's some more existing condition photos at Bloomington 15th and 4th Avenue. We see some bollards knocked down. So as far as the project coordination piece is concerned, there's uh, this year there's a, uh, a resurfacing taking place on 42nd Street between 17th Avenue and Cedar Avenue. There's uh, and that's really to address degrading pavement conditions. So that's when they take off that top layer and they they put a a, a fresh layer of, uh, of uh, bituminous down to uh, resurface the street. And after this, after this intersection improvement project is finished, we also have a resurfacing and protected bikeway project between Nicolette and 17th Avenue. But that's programmed for 2027 or 2028. It's still undetermined if these two projects will be done in the same year or if they'll be independent from each other. But this project that we're doing with the intersections is setting us up for that future uh, resurfacing and protected uh, uh, separated bikeway projects in later years. And Brian, just to chime in on that, um, those projects, those last two that Ryan mentioned, the uh, 17 to Nicolette resurfacing and the separated bikeway, um, the city is working to try to align, uh, see if there's the ability to align the timing of those projects, recognizing that that's a lot of work being done over a span of several years. And so if we can more closely uh, coordinate those schedules and adjust schedules, um, that's something that we are actively talking through and going to look to achieve if, if possible. Yes, well said. And you know, as far as MnDOT goes, due to the 40, due to 42nd Street and Stevens Avenue intersections proximity to the bridge over 35W, there may be a coordination piece with MnDOT. There's uh, and for the county, there is a, a future bikeway project currently in the planning process for a protected bikeway on Park in Portland, which intersects with 42nd Street. Part of this coordination will be to ensure that the county and city's projects are on the same page moving forward. So for the, for our intersection project, intersection safety improvement project on 42nd Street, we are looking at different intersection safety approvals. Oh, Ryan may have frozen, so I will um, go over this slide to, while he comes back. Um, the project scope is um, we are looking at different intersection safety treatments, such as um, curb bump outs. Uh, pedestrian refuge medians. Um, also going to be looking at doing some ADA ramp upgrades at the intersections that we are working, uh, those six intersections. However, because of the resurfacing that is also coming, that work will also be doing some ramp upgrades at the other intersections that aren't being touched by this project. Um, and as Ryan mentioned, also coordinating um, 
bicycle improvements along 40, the segment of 42nd. And so one element that this project will be doing is looking at protected intersection treatments for bikes at those intersections um, where we, um, similar to what is at 42nd and Cedar, although recognizing that um, that specific example had some design issues, but looking at ramping bikes up behind the curb, improving um, visibility for bicyclists along the bikeway, and this will lay the foundation for a protected bikeway on 42nd, um, as Ryan previously mentioned, moving forward. Um, while we are waiting for Ryan to come back, um, we'll pause here to see. It looks like um, we have a question in the chat um, about 42nd and Stevens. Um, the question says this in um, at 42nd Stevens, this intersection is how I get to 35W South freeway ramp at 46th. With the bollards and the solid yellow line down the middle, my impression is that it is now illegal to take a left turn onto Stevens and 42nd. Is this true? And is this part of the purpose of this particular use of the bollards here? Um, Hello. Out. Um, so for that um, 42nd and Stevens intersection, part of the goal on Stevens with that flex with those flex posts that were put in was to reduce traffic going down Stevens. Um, it is a neighborhood street and was not designed for um, use as a, an on-ramp to 35W and that street has had some speeding issues. Um, so that was part of the purpose. With this project, we will be revisiting the design of those flex posts and looking at different options, including keeping that median closed or should it be opened back up for turning movements on to Stevens. Um, and so um, that will be something that we're exploring with this project. And um, you will see with the next round of engagement when we bring forward some layout concepts. Ryan, um, nice to have you back. I went over <laughs> this slide. Um, so if you want to move on to the, the next slide with the scope. Yeah, I apologize, everyone. It is storming here in South Minneapolis. I think there that has to do with uh, my internet issue. So I do apologize for that. Thank you, Fontaine, for picking up. <laughs> uh, we'll just move on. So with our uh, here, here we have uh, an example of, of curb extensions, also known as bump outs. There, uh, there an inter it's an extension of the sidewalk zone or curb line into the into the roadway zone at intersections or mid-block locations. So these curb extensions are intended to increase safety, calm motorized traffic, and create additional space for pedestrians and the boulevard and furnishing zone. So on the left here, we have a picture of, uh, it's like a before and after, after picture of, it, of Grand Avenue and 32nd Street. And then on the right, it's the uh, post construction. These these uh, these bump outs provide several benefits, like slowing vehicle turning speeds by decreasing that curb radii, and visually, it also visually narrows the roadway. You can see how it, once you get closer to the intersection, uh, the bump outs narrow the intersection a bit, and that that causes drivers to slow down before they make their turn, and it reduces that pedestrian crossing distance as well. So before this project was was implemented crossing Grand Avenue from uh, from left to right here. That was about a 40 foot crossing and after it was now it's a 20 foot crossing. So we were able to half that crossing and create a better environment for our pedestrians and folks crossing the street. This also has the added benefit of restricting vehicles from parking too close to the intersection and inhibiting sight lines. So if you're a pedestrian waiting across here, there won't be a car parked right there, you can clearly see uh, you have a clear sight line down so that you can make a safe crossing. Another before and after picture of the intersection of 36th Street and Bryant Avenue. The, this is a uh, an example of a protected intersection for bikes. These protected intersections allow for physical separation between bicycles and motorized traffic 
further into the intersection than a non non protected intersection like intersection bump outs a well designed uh, well designed uh, protected intersections accomplish multiple benefits like reducing conflict points with motorized traffic it clarifies travel paths through the intersection and promotes increased safety and comfort for the for our most vulnerable users of the roadway so before we had our our bicyclists uh, an unprotected bike lane coming forward and when they wanted to cross the street they were pretty much they were almost in the intersection and now this protected intersection allows our, our bicyclists to go up onto the curb and make a safe crossing that way. Yeah. Lastly here is the before and after of a pedestrian refuge. These pedestrian refuge islands provide a barrier between traffic lanes while also they can be used for things like providing refuge for people walking and biking, also protect against head-on motor vehicle crashes and uh, preventing turns and providing space uh, for greening potentially. So this is uh, the intersection of Franklin Avenue and Bryant Avenue, where we have a uh, pedestrian crossing here while also a safe bike crossing here in the middle as well. So before we get into the survey results, on behalf of the project team, thank you to everyone who took the time to complete our survey over the last month. Your, your valuable feedback is the cornerstone of a successful project. And as we move forward, rest assured that your voices will be heard and your feedback will be carefully considered as appropriate. So just some of the highlights that we have. Uh, to, as of today, we had about 87 responses. Some of the things we, we've, we've seen and heard is that speeding and motorists turning unsafely were among the highest concern for residents. And many residents run errands and commute via car on 42nd, but as a pedestrian, they may not feel as safe. So this QR code here on the right is a, a link to our survey. Uh, I, Fontaine, if you can also put the link to our survey in the chat for folks to see. And you know, this, this survey is, we're going to be keeping it open for another week or two here, so uh, be sure to get your responses in if you haven't already. But I'm just going to go over a few highlights. So this, this bar chart represents traffic safety concerns for all uh, project intersections on 42nd Street that we're looking at. When asked about traffic concerns based on individual experiences, we see that for the average of all six intersections that drivers traveling too fast had the highest share of responses uh, and that were a significant problem, followed by drivers failing to stop and yield to people and drivers turning unsafely. Not having enough traffic gap to cross 42nd Street safely had the highest proportion of not a problem uh, responses at 26%. So now we're gonna get into the individual intersections. This is for Stevens Avenue. Resp uh, respondents reported drivers turning unsafely as the largest significant problem and moderate problem for, for traffic concerns. In other words, 55% of respondents reported drivers turning unsafely at the intersection of 42nd and Stevens is a significant or moderate problem. Followed closely by drivers traveling too fast, where 59% of respondents identified that it is either a significant or moderate problem. So for Stevens Avenue, we're really seeing the data showing us that Drivers traveling too fast and turning unsafely is a significant or moderate problem for, for our residents in the area. Third Avenue, 30% of the respondents answered that drivers traveling too fast was a significant problem, while 30% also reported that having a big enough gap in traffic to cross the street was not a problem. So we're going to see some common themes as we progress through these. Uh, Fourth Avenue, more of the same. Uh, drivers traveling too fast, turning unsafely. 10th Avenue, a little bit different, but we're really seeing a big spike in drivers traveling too fast near 10th Avenue. 60% of respondents answered that driving too fast was either significant or moderate. For 15th Avenue, much of the same. Nearly half of respondents answered that drivers traveling too fast was a significant problem, while 65 percent of respondents reported that drivers uh, blocking the sidewalk was either not a problem or neutral unsure. And that was this one here. Lastly, Bloomington Avenue, 
For Bloomington Avenue, around two thirds of our respondents answered that drivers are too, drive, traveling too fast, uh, it was, that it was either a significant or moderate problem. And thir while 36% reported that lighting at this intersection was neither was either a minor or not a problem at all. So when asked about traffic, other traffic concerns not covered in the previous questions, here's what we heard the most. So as words got repeated, uh, words get bigger the more they are repeated by respondents. So we see a lot of traffic, speeding, Chicago, Bloomington, uh, unsafe, bollards, you know, they, these are all uh, things that reoccurred in, in our respondents' uh, responses <laughs> to, the, to that question. Some of the key destinations, and I'll just leave this up for a couple of seconds for folks to read, but when asked uh, what other key destinations do people travel to along 42nd, a lot of folks use 42nd to, to commute or when they're off of work, maybe they, they walk their dog or they go to uh, local local air, local stores and grocery stores and or ride their bike. When asked if how your travel habits uh, would change if you felt safer on 42nd, just over half of our respondents said that they would take more biking uh, and walking rolling trips, which is really encouraging. 31% said their habits won't change, and 18% either say that they would take more walking and biking trips only, or they would take more biking trips only. So either way, they're taking more trips not in their vehicle. We are currently in the tail end of phase one engagement. So far, we've sent out project information mailers to respondents, provided project information to relevant, neighbor to relevant neighborhood groups, and created a project survey. The survey will be open for the remainder of the week or next week, uh, so be sure to get your responses in before the, before uh, we, we close that out. And, and ne looking ahead, next up, we will be we will begin developing intersection concept layouts based on the feedback and guiding policy. And we plan on presenting the community presenting the community these concept layouts uh, later this summer for an in-person open house. The time and location for this is still to be determined, so make sure you are subscribed to our new newsletter for any updates. Uh, Fontaine will drop the link to our project newsletter at this time. Uh, and by the end of the year, we expect to have our preliminary design chosen, and then we will transition into final design and engineering phase in 2025, leading us to construction in 2026. So just a caveat to that is construction timeline may shift due to coordination with uh, the, the future resurfacing and bikeway uh, projects that we spoke about a little bit earlier. Here's a link to our project website if for those of you who haven't uh, checked that out yet, as well as uh, another QR code to our, to our survey. Fontaine and I's contact information is there. I'll leave this up for a couple seconds if folks wanted to jot anything down. And of course, I can always go back a slide. At this time, I'll open the floor to uh, uh, for our Q&A session. Feel free to post your question or comment in the chat at this time. And again, click that uh, chat bubble on the uh, to the left of the red leave button located in the top right hand corner of the screen. And at this time, we are open for questions. Ryan, um, we do have a couple questions in here. Um, I have one that I have answered in the chat, but um, I will elaborate a little more. The question was about, um, well, I, I guess I did talk about it while you were frozen um, previously, but um, the the 42nd and Stevens intersection, um, just want to reinforce that we will be looking at uh, different design options at that intersection, um, some including an open median that would allow left turns onto Stevens and some that would uh, close that median and prohibit left turns. Um, 
those concept layouts will be shared uh, during our next round of engagement at 15% design later this summer. Um, we also um, got a question of whether um, if only the specific intersections called out on the slides are in scope for the protected intersections. And that question came from Shannon. Yeah, so the, the answer is, uh, is uh, yes for that one. Uh, all, all six intersections will be carefully looked at for how a protected bike intersection or a protected intersection will look. Uh, and like Fontaine said, we will uh, be presenting uh, the, the community with a couple options for each of the intersections for, for us to discuss. Can you describe in more detail the protected intersection design and how it differs from the 42nd and Cedar design? And are there any of those specific intersections called out on the slide and scope? That, okay. was, the, that was the question we just did. I, I put an answer okay. in the chat um, about that. 42nd and okay. Cedar one. I will just note that um, at 42nd and Cedar, um, uh, the the issue that I noted about the lack of bike lanes, um, those projects are, that issue is also being currently looked at through the uh, resurfacings that are upcoming both on the city's leg of the intersection, which is um, 42nd going towards 17th and then this county also has an upcoming resurfacing on 42nd going um towards uh mini are uh, going heading east uh towards 21st and also be looking at updating that um that intersection as part of those projects but that is separate from this um, Ryan, there's also a question about the survey, how long it is open, and if there's an option for keeping it open longer. Yes. So regarding the survey, um, we plan to have it op open for about a week here and then uh, cl uh, closing it out at that time. So um, the next question comes from Carrie. Um, they have at the question is it seems like the amount of traffic on 42nd increased over the past years especially once the 38th street changed do you expect overall traffic levels on 42nd to remain the same yep so recognizing the um 38th chicago intersection george george floyd square um that that project is still currently uh in the planning phase uh, we do have the pro uh, the, the website uh, for that for that project uh, if you wanted to ask specific questions about that particular one but as far as the traffic is concerned um, we we that's not something that that we know uh, if if the traffic will uh, continue as is or if it'll increase or decrease we we currently do not have uh, those those figures I will just add to that um for a while, buses were rerouted off of 38th onto 42nd um, to go around um, 38th in Chicago. Those buses have been put back on 38th and are no longer using 42nd as their route. So that's been a, a recent change. Um, we have a next question. Um, Wondering if in the short term, there could be anything like a crosswalk added between Chicago and Bloomington as we're preparing for an overhaul. Two years of no place to safely walk across 42nd outside of Bloomington is tough. Yeah, so the question was, are there gonna be any additional crosswalks between Chicago and Bloomington? Uh, as part of this uh, planning phase, we are looking at uh, multiple options and that is something that uh, will be considered. But of course, we will have to, um, that, that's something we'll have to discuss with our traffic division and our uh, maintenance division as well. But that is that is something that we are looking at and something that we've also read in our, uh, the survey responses as well. So thank you for your comment on that. 
Um, the next one is, will there be a change to the overall width of 42nd through the project or the bikeway, um, yep. not just bump outs at the intersection? Yep, uh, good question uh, about if, if there's going to be any changes to the width of the, the streets, uh, 42nd Street in between the intersections. Uh, at this time, that's uh, not something that we anticipate uh, with this project. This project is solely focused on the, the intersections themselves. Um, we'll also just add with the the future protected bikeway, um, we will be utilizing the existing asphalt with that future project. So while the actual road of the width will not change, the addition of a protected bikeway will help um, reduce the travel, the, the road width or the feeling of the road width. Um, as part of that project, which will also, when that project gets implemented, help calm traffic speeds as well, or encourage uh, drivers to drive slower. Um, we have another question. Um, I'm a big pedestrian and bike advocate, um, but bollards don't do anything for me. I've been through 42nd Stevens thousands of time by car, bike, and foot, and over the years, I've only once seen a pedestrian cross here. People access MLK Park by Nicolette or by 40th Street. Is there a count study on how many pedestrians actually cross here? Yeah. Uh, so, sorry, just what was the intersection again? Uh, 42nd and Stevens. 42nd and Stevens. Yeah, so as far as uh, getting pedestrian counts, that's something that we would actually have to go out and manually do. We currently do not have uh, pedestrian counts of uh, crossing at that current at that specific location. And, you know, the, the bollards is something that, you know, we, we've heard from from residents as uh, being unsightly and uh, that uh, folks don't particularly like as much. But what we do know is that they do, they are a lot safer than than nothing. And you know, as as I mentioned earlier, this street was identified as a high injury street, and part of that is part of the city's goal is to eliminate those uh, those traffic fatalities and high injuries. And uh, bollards are a, a quick t uh, a quick uh, uh, treatment that we can put out to to not only increase safety for pedestrians crossing, but it also uh, causes uh, drivers to slow down due to the uh, Due to the bollards uh, encroachment into the into the roadway as well, so it also has that dual effect of uh, slowing speeds. Um, the next question: um, the lack of bike lanes is exactly what I don't like as a pedestrian cyclist at Forty Second Cedar. It does not feel safe to merge into any traffic. Um, on 42nd, um, not a question, but we'll acknowledge that we are aware of that issue at 42nd and Cedar and working closely with the county um, to look at strategies to address the current um, configuration of that intersection. Uh, there's another question, how are specific designs ultimately chosen? Yeah, that's a great question. So as far as how are specific design elements ultimately chosen it's a it's a two-pronged approach really with this project we are looking at our uh, policy and guidance at the city and also uh, feedback from uh, community members that's why we are coming back to you all uh, later this summer with uh, a couple different treatment options for the intersections and uh, that th that's those are the main ways we uh, we choose uh, our uh, intersection treatments as well as uh, you know data you know, and, and and other projects that we've done similarly in the city. There are a lot of intersections in city of Minneapolis, and uh, we've, we've done a lot of uh, intersection improvements. We have uh, before and after data. We have uh, an eval team on our staff that looks at that sort of thing. And uh, the, the treatments that we will be proposing are, are proven treatments that have uh, not only worked here, but other other cities in the in the city as or in the country as well. Um, looking at keeping that, um, there's, um, 
been another question about keeping the survey open um, for council member from council member Jenkins um, that we can certainly keep that survey open. I'm trying to pull up my calendar very quick. Um, we can keep it open. I'm trying to select a date so everyone on the call knows when it will be open through. Um, Brian, why don't we say we keep it open through Sunday the uh, 16th, which would leave it open for another two weeks. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Keep it open to the 16th. Got it. Um, there is also a question from uh, Council Member Jenkins, and thank you for joining us, about um, whether we are coordinating with Metro Transit on this project. Yes, uh, thank you, Council Member uh, Jenkins, for uh, joining us this evening. Uh, regarding coordination with, with Metro Transit, uh, there are currently two bus routes that uh, cross, cross 42nd Street, one at 4th Ave and one at Bloomington. And the answer is yes, we are coordinating with with our partners at Metro Transit to uh, coordinate different uh, aspects of uh, what these, how these intersections could affect uh, traffic operations with our transit vehicles. And also working with them um, on improvement, potential improvements to uh, the existing bus stops, um, especially at the intersection of uh, 42nd and Bloomington. Leave a couple minutes uh, to see if there's any more questions that come through. Um, so far, I'm not seeing any. I think we will um, keep the, we will extend the survey timeline and keep it up through the 16th. Um, so if you have not taken the survey already, please um, take it, share it um, with your neighbors or um, with others that you know use 42nd or would be interested in this project. Um, and it will be open um, through the 16th. Yeah. Oh, and did you see one more question? Just a great, yep. thank you. Awesome. Yeah, so on, on behalf of the project team, we appreciate your attendance to this open house and look forward to hearing from you as this project moves forward. Thanks again for everyone and uh, their questions and, the, and their time this evening. Uh, with that, uh, have, have a great rest of your night and uh, we will be reaching out over the next couple months for 15%.